So then, in the last lesson, we talked briefly about how Docker images are made up of different layers, right? And generally, when we're making a new Docker image, our first layer is going to be some kind of parent image, like the node one that we downloaded. And then this parent image would normally be an operating system and something like Node or Python or PHP or Ruby or something else entirely. Then on top of this initial layer, we'd add our own extra layers, which add more to the image or change the image. So that's how you can think of layers as changes to the image that we're ultimately making. For example, we'd copy source code over to the image, we'd install dependencies on the image, and we'd store other information like commands inside the image as well. But how do we do all this? How do we actually create our own Docker image with all of these different layers? Well, it's pretty simple to do. We just create something called a Docker file, which is like a set of instructions to Docker to create the image. And the Docker file essentially lists out all of these different layers or instructions to create those layers on an image. So now let's take a quick look at how to make a Docker file and then use it to create a Docker image. Now I've already got open a dummy application here in this API folder, which you can find on the lesson five branch of the course files on GitHub. The link to that is gonna be down below the video. And this application is just a simple node app, which uses Express to create a very, very, very simple API. So you can see right here in the app file that we have a simple Express application set up and we're listening for requests on port 4000. And we have this handler function right here for this endpoint, which is just basically the root endpoint. So when a GET request comes in to this endpoint, then as a response, we'll send this JSON data. So like I said, a really simple API. But don't worry if you don't actually understand this code here, it's not overly relevant to what we're about to do with Docker. It's just a dummy node application that we're gonna create a Docker image for and then eventually run it inside a container. So this application also has dependencies that need to be installed for its work. And those dependencies are listed inside the package.json file. Okay, so you can see right here, for example, we have express as a dependency. Now, normally, if I wanted to run this application directly on my computer, I'd first of all need to run npm install in this project directory. So I'd open up a terminal and type npm install. And that would install the project dependencies inside this project folder in a node modules folder. And then after that, to run the application, I just type node app.js, which is the name of the file I want to run. And that would start the application running directly on my computer. And it would be using the node version that I have installed on my computer. But we don't want to do that. We want to run the application inside an isolated container with its own version of node running inside it. So to do that, we'd need to make an image. And that image should contain the initial parent image layer to say what version of node and Linux distribution we want the container to run. And then after that, the extra layers, which will be to copy this source code and all the dependencies into it, and then some extra information too. And again, the way we make this image is by first making a Docker file. So let's start now by making that Docker file in the root of this project folder. So the name of the Docker file is just Docker file with a capital D and no extension at the end of it. I remember this Docker file is like a set of instructions which tells Docker how to create a specific image with all of its different layers. And each instruction is gonna be on a different line inside this file. And generally speaking, each line in a Docker file kind of represents a different layer in our final image. Now, before you start actually writing this out, it might be a good idea to install the Docker package for VS Code. So if you wanna install that, go to extensions and then just search for Docker up here and it's this package right here. So click install and you can read about it right here. So install that first of all, then we can start to write out this file. So the first instruction, the first layer of our image is gonna be the parent image, the node image that we can download from Docker Hub. So this goes at the top of the file because it will be the first layer or the initial layer of the image that we want to create. Now to do this, we simply write from in capital letters and then the name of the image that we want. In our case, that's going to be node and then a colon and say 17 hyphen alpine. 
So what this line says is that to begin with, we want to pull in the node image into our image as the initial layer. So when we run this file later to create our image, it will pull in the node image first of all, and it's gonna pull it either from the Docker Hub repository if we haven't already downloaded it, or our own computer if we have. Now, we downloaded a node image, but it wasn't exactly this one. It was kind of the default version of that image, the latest one. But this one now has this tag, 17-alpine, which means get version 17 of Node and use the Alpine distribution of Linux, all right? So it's gonna download this from Docker Hub. So then that is our initial layer, a parent image. And to add a parent image like this as the initial layer, remember we use the from keyword at the top of our Docker file. So then on top of this, we also need to add our own additional layers. Now, the next layer I want to add is to copy all of our source code into the image. So this app.js file and these JSON files as well. And to do that, we say copy in capital letters, then a dot, then a space, then a dot again. But what does this mean? Well, first of all, we say copy, which means copy some files to the image. And then the first dot is a relative path to the directory I wanna copy my source files from. And since those source files are in the same kind of root directory as the Docker file, then the path is just gonna be a single dot, which means the current directory. If all my source code was in a source folder over here, then instead of just a dot, it would be dot and then forward slash source. Now the second dot, is the path inside the image that I wanna copy my source code to. Remember, I said the images have their own folder structure. So right now, we just say dot, which means copy into the root directory of the image that we're creating. Now, a lot of the time, we don't copy into the root directory because it might clash with other files or folders inside that root directory. So instead, we could say copy to a path which is forward slash app, for example, and then this would copy our source files into a new folder called app inside the image, all right? So the next layer of the image would be all the dependencies that we need to install on the image. Now, to install dependencies into a project, we'd run npm install, and we can do a similar thing to the image that we make. We're allowed to specify commands that we wanna run in the image as the image gets built, so at build time. And to specify a command, we'd use the run instruction. Now, the command that we wanna run is npm install, which installs all the dependencies listed in the package.json file. Remember, we copied that file over to the image in the previous layer. So this run instruction right here tells Docker to run a command on the image itself as this layer is being added on while the image is being built. And so then all the project dependencies will be installed onto the image as well. But there is one slight problem. The command is gonna be run inside the root directory of the image, but our package.json file got copied to an app folder. So that means that when this command gets run in the root folder of the image, it won't see the package.json file in that folder, and therefore it won't install the dependencies. So for this to work, we need to run this command in the same directory as our package.json file. So that's inside the app folder, right? And the way we do that is by specifying a working directory for the image. So the way we do this is by adding a work dir, which stands for work directory instruction to the Docker file. And I'm gonna place this at the top just underneath the first instruction so that every instruction after this can use that working directory. And for a value, I'm just gonna say forward slash app. So what does this working directory do for us? Well, it tells Docker that when we run commands on the image in future, after this instruction, or if we specify paths inside the image, to do it from this working directory. So now when a command is run, like this npm install, it will do it from inside the app folder. So that is one problem now solved. But there is one other change that we need to quickly make now that we have this working directory. It's the path that we wanna to copy to right here because this is now a path relative to that working directory, which means that the source code will now get copied into forward slash app and then forward slash app again. So to solve this, we can just replace this with a single dot and that means copy it to the root directory relative, remember, to the working directory now. And so now everything should work correctly. 
So again, we can specify a working directory so that any commands that we run or any paths that we specify after this instruction are done relative to this working directory. Now, there is one more instruction I want to create, and that's another command to actually run the application in the container. Now, to run this node application, we'd run the command normally, node app.js in the terminal, right? So you might think that we'd just add another run instruction right here at the bottom to say node app.js, but we don't do that. Let's think about why not. When we add a run instruction, it runs a command as the image is being built. So at build time. And remember, the image is not a running application. It's just a blueprint for a container. And the container is the thing that actually runs the application. In other words, it's a running instance of the image. So it makes sense to use the run instruction for installing dependencies at build time onto the image as the image is being created. And that way they're all included in the image and ready for when we run the container based on that image. But it doesn't make sense to run the node app.js command at build time because we're not trying to run the application when we're building the image. We're just making the image, right? And instead, we want to run the node app.js command when we have a running instance of the image inside the container. So how do we specify this? Well, instead of using the run instruction, we use an instruction called CMD. And CMD allows us to specify any commands that should be run at runtime when the container begins to run. But the way we write this command is a little bit different. We write the command as an array of strings in double quotes. So the first one would be node, and then the second one, the second element would be app.js. And then when the container runs, this command will be run right here, which is node app.js, and that is gonna spin up our application inside the container. All right, so now there is one more thing I wanna to add to this Docker file, and that is an expose instruction, which tells Docker which port the container should expose. Because remember, inside the app.js file, when we start up the server, we listen for requests on port 4000. Now, this app is gonna be running inside the container. So the port is gonna be owned by the container as well, not our computer, but by the container. And to make requests to this API, we need to send them to the container using this port number. So in the Docker file, we can add an instruction which tells Docker what port is gonna be exposed by the container, which in our case is gonna be port 4000. Now, this expose instruction is kind of optional. We only really need it here if we're gonna be running images and spinning up containers using the Docker desktop application, because Docker desktop will use this information in the Docker file to set up something called port mapping later on, and we'll learn about that later as well. But if we're running containers from the command line, then it's not really needed, but I still like to add it so that at a glance at this Docker file, I can see which port is gonna be exposed for this application. So I'm gonna keep it in. And that's pretty much it for the Docker file. So we specify a parent image at the start as the first layer. Then we specify a working directory of the image. Then we copy over all the source files. Then we run the npm install command at build time to add all the dependencies to the image. Then we say expose port 4000. And then finally, we specify a command that should be run only when the container based on this image is run. Now the final step is to actually build this image and that's really simple to do. We just have to run a single Docker command in the same directory that this Docker file is in. So open up a terminal and make sure you're in the project directory down here, the API directory. If you're not, just CD into the API folder. Then type Docker and then we use a command called build. So Docker build. And then after that, we can use a flag hyphen T, which stands for tag. And this allows us to basically give the image a name, which I'm gonna call my app. And then after that, we'll put a dot at the end. Now the dot is a relative path to the Docker file from the directory we're in inside this terminal right here. And since we're in the same directory as the Docker file, then the path is just a dot to say this current same directory that we're in. So now hit enter. And then this is gonna go through each of the instructions in the Docker file and do each one in turn. And each time it does one of those, it's essentially adding a new layer to the Docker image that we're creating right now. And you can see each of those steps happening as you watch the build process in the terminal. 
All right, so once that's all done, the image is created and we don't see any extra file in this project to represent that image anywhere at all. It's stored away for us in a special Docker folder on our computer. But if we open up Docker desktop, then we can see this extra image now listed right here with the name that we gave it, my app. Awesome.